If you're just joining us, welcome once again. And if you're a new listener, welcome to uh, the Ensign Radio Network. Once again, I have with me Mr. Brian K. Hemphill, author of the soon-to-be-released book, The Element of Creative and Expressive Artistry. Brian, welcome back. Oh, very good. All right. So we so far we spoke about um, we spoke about form. Form. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We spoke about composition, uh, about technique, about uh, perception, uh-huh. uh huh, and the, the next element is emotionality. All right, good, and that's of course being able to express your emotions. Mm-hmm. Because how many performances have we seen, for example, where a person is not in touch with their emotions? I am one of those. <laughs> nah, nah, I don't even try. <laughs> uh, and you know, the consequent work is kind of flat yes. and emotionless. Yes, right. It has yes. no, uh, and as a consequence of that. One of the first and most important things is people really need to get to know their own emotions. Yes, that, right. Tend to that. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what media that you want to express your emotions. Good artists always express their emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not as easy as it sounds. You know, a lot of oftentimes, if you're talking about a performer, for example, they're often very shy, yes. very sensitive. Sometimes their emotions get easily bruised and things like that, mm-hmm. you know, because they're revealing themselves to the world. But the best artists are able to do it time and time again. Mm-hmm. Now, it doesn't matter what form of music. You talk about a B.B. King in blues uh-huh. uh, or Mahalia Jackson. Mm-hmm. You know, in that situation, then you're really dealing with people that are able to kind of throw their emotions out there for their audience. Okay. Right? To, to live in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so emotionality, uh, beyond emotionality, uh, there's actually an interesting one. That's imagination. But imagination is not just conscious imagination there's also an aspect that's subconscious imagination now let me ask you this you mentioned imagination um i'm thinking isn't that how similar is that to perception okay that's interesting don't it, they go hand in hand well they're, they're that's that's very perceptive okay I, they're very related so now actually. i'm using perception right exactly <laughs> yeah no they're, they're, they're related um Perception is how you actually see things in the universe. Mm-hmm. Because anytime we look at something, for example, let's say we're talking about visual perception. When you look at something, we make an image in our mind's eye of the thing that we see. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're very perceptive, that image is going to be very precise. And we all see things differently. But right. it's going to be precise to how you see it. And then you're going to be able to recreate it in that preciseness. Imagination is more taking what you see perceptively and interpreting it in how you want to interpret it. So you may create a house that you see, but because let's say it's a house that's been around for a long time, it's weathered, it's, you know, you might choose to make it a little bit more distorted. Mm-hmm. Get what I'm saying? So that it fits into the picture that you're creating. So okay. imagination, you're not following perception 100%. You're taking it and you're toying with it. I see. You're manipulating see. it to whatever the in artistic intention that you're trying to get. Okay. All okay. right. So if you're a singer, for example, uh, and you enunciate a certain word, as you know, as you get more emotional, the words start to distort. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they break up. Sometimes you, the voice may crack, like under emotional stress. Right, right. But that's the distortion. Mm-hmm. But good imaginative artists always do that. Just because I can perceive how to do a particular form, there are times when I have to use my imagination to even take it beyond what's been expressed. Oh, okay. All right? And sometimes people say, wow, that's... And even if you consider like a movie, uh, there's a lot of movies. Uh, There was Alice in Wonderland with Johnny Depp recently, for example. Very imaginative. But once you... If you get inside that world, it creates a whole world that has its own logic. Mm -hmm. Even though it's very different and very strange... Imagination allows us to create something we say, wow, that's real within that particular world. Uh-huh. If you see aliens, you remember the original alien? Mm, uh, I don't think I've ever oh, seen any of oh, them. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Or even, even, even something like um, the, the recent uh, 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 Batman movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Which I haven't seen either. Right. But with each, every movie creates their own reality. Mm-hmm. And imagination is a way to do that. Now, some people's imagination is so far out. Yes. That it's like, wow. You know, and that's the beauty of imagination. And then other people's imagination is so timid. It's like, I've seen that before. Mm-hmm. There's nothing special about that vision. So pretty much imagination as we know it has really no, uh, no right. right or wrong to exactly. your imagination. Right. It, 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 it more relies on consistency. If you start off okay. with the premise that every time I drink this red liquid okay. in this movie, I'm going to shrink 
down to two inches, you got to be consistent with that. <laughs> We've all seen movies where it kind of yeah, the logic yeah. goes off. Mm-hmm. You said, well, why didn't he just take out a gun and shoot him? They have right. guns all over the place. <laughs> you know? I know, right? And, and, and that's, you know, poor imagination. But imagination is actually broken up into two things. You have conscious imagination, mm-hmm. uh, the things that we are conscious of. But the other aspect of imagination that is almost not discussed routinely when we talk about artistry is subconscious imagination. Okay. That's the imagination we're trying to work to solve an artistic problem. You're like, how am I going to, um, for example, Spider-Man uh, on Broadway, right? Mm-hmm. Turn out the lights. It's now finally open, all right? Um, that movie was plagued with a lot of problems of people falling, right? Some of the yes. p- p- uh, performers falling and injuring themselves and things like that. Stunt people getting hurt, you know? Um, so they had to figure out how do we how do we have these flying scenes, these aerial fights? It's mm. imagination. Okay. Now, when you're constantly trying to think of the problem, you're saying, "What can we do to solve it?" A lot of times, it's not going to come to you. It's not until maybe you, you go to sleep or you take a rest mm-hmm. or you're walking and you go, "Aha!" You wake up and you say, "That's it. That's what I got to do." Right. I mean, that's subconscious imagination. Subconscious imagination is so powerful because it works while you're sleeping, while you're resting. It's not imagination that you can force. And that's so. Um, as a writer, that's so I write. I normally dream about uh, right. what I am. Um, I normally dream the song and then get out of right. bed literally to write down exactly. what I dream about. But you do spend time before that trying to write the song. Yeah. And then it's sometimes taxing your mind for hours and, and not really getting anything. That's a part of the process. That's the okay. conscious imagination part. Okay. But then when you take a break and say, you know what? You know, I'll come back later. Exactly. So the conscious imagination part is revving up the mind. Mm-hmm. You got to do the work. You can't just daydream. But once you do the work and then you take a break. Mm-hmm whether it's sleeping or doing something other than the work, Uh then that's often when we get the epiphany. We get like, aha moment. Okay. And it just comes to us. So it's, they both work hand in hand. Okay, got you, got you. Uh, Beyond uh, imagination, uh, there's also another one that's probably even less talked about than, well, subconscious imagination is not often talked about, but uh, spirituality. Okay. Is one that people don't recognize. And that's a very important one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And in fact, in, in terms of uh, how many chapters I talk about, it, it's, it's a pretty, pretty big unit in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, spirituality is everything from um, uh, the inspiration. Right? Mm-hmm. When you're inspired uh, artistically, I mean, it seems like you can't do any wrong. Everything that f- is flowing out of you. Mm-hmm. But that's really because that's a part of your spirit. You know, there's nothing. You're not trying to be self-conscious about it. You're just letting it flow. It's what right. you really care about. So you have that, you have passion, mm-hmm. the ability to be committed to an idea and express that idea with all your heart and soul. Right. Um, you have um, uh, an aspect uh, of it, uh, even something as simple as the call, mm-hmm. the urging to do something artistically, to do okay. a particular work, the call. It's like a whisper. You say, wow, you know what? I'm going to write this. A song and let me this. give you an example because um, I have a friend of mine who, uh, because he knows some of the difficulties I've been through okay. in my life right. always keep urging me to write a book. Ah. Dear Roy, you need to write right. a book. Right. It's like every conversation I keep hearing that. Right. But me, personally, okay. I am not motivated to do that, at least not yet. Well, not yet, and that's the key word. I mean, the urge, sometimes urgings can be in your spirit for a while before you manifest it, uh-huh. and that's okay. You're going to probably end up writing that book. If, you, if that voice is kind of pushing you to do it, it may not be the right time. Right. And that's what it is. And when you're talking about writing a book, you know, you're talking about writing a book and you're talking about being honest, coming from the heart. Exactly. And that's really not an easy feat. You really have to do it when you're ready, because if not, it's going to be forced. You're not going to be as open as you probably would be. The final product will not be. It's going to suffer. Yes. It's certainly going to suffer. Exactly. Uh, And beyond spirituality uh, is the probably the most um, high regard... um, Element and I, the root element, and I call that is spontaneity. Okay. To be able to be just spontaneous. Okay. To, to be improvisational, to kind of express yourself and not worry about anything beyond the moment. Mm-hmm. Th- this is who I am at the moment, right now, and I have no qualms about expressing it. I have no embarrassment about expressing it. Okay. Right now, we're going to take another break, and we'll be back with Brian K. Hemphill. We, we're talking about a lot of stuff today, and that's good because. The listeners, I'm sure a lot of them out there are artists or dancers, whatever, and they'll be able to learn so much from this interview. We'll be right back. 